Welcome everybody to another Halu Sees It review. Today I am taking a look at Gift of Tulips. This is designed by Sarah Perry, published by Weird Giraffe Games. First thing you'll probably notice with this is actually the beautiful artwork with this. And it was illustrations uh, by uh, Emily Hancock, Katie Grierson. Uh, with some graphic design by Katie Cow and Maria Gabriella Patino. Uh, a lot of uh, great work went into this game. Uh, this is a uh, publisher copy provided by Weird Giraffe Games to me for free for purposes of this review. Uh, this Gift of Tulips is a very, very fun game. What I, uh, one of the things I really like about it is it is for two to six players. Uh, and I think it does work well uh, with the scaling that they've done and everything for all player counts. I think that it does work a little bit better with at least three players. Uh, the two player, uh, it works works great with two players as well but uh, I do like it with a little bit more uh, players. Uh, ages eight and up, 20 minutes. It can be a very quick game, uh, but as far as the production quality of this game, it is fantastic. Uh, you have this uh, great box. Everything fits in the box uh, really well. And uh, so it is a very nice, uh, easy travel type game. Uh, and we'll go ahead and show you the components. The components to this are all uh, top-notch as well. So there's lots and lots of cards in this game. Uh, and uh, the quality of the cards uh, is, is really nice. It's got that nice uh, linen finish on them. They have a, a they're really good thickness to them. Uh, just really, really well done. Uh, on the cards, which makes up the majority of the game. So the card quality is great. The artwork inside the game, as you can see, is I just really, really love it. So they have that very distinctive uh, style. Uh, you have uh, the uh, Tulip Festival, so Amsterdam's Tulip Festival. And uh, there's uh, some great little information here in the rule book as well on the different tulip varieties used. Some information about the game designer as well. But just uh, some really, really great artwork throughout this game for the uh, tulips themselves to the uh, artwork, this very unique and very distinct uh, style of that like blue and white uh, artwork for the Netherlands here. Uh, and uh, you have this beautiful uh, windmill, uh, you may have noticed from the cover there, uh, in that blue and white for the backs of the cards, the tulip cards. Uh, just really, really great. We have a reference here. Uh, for the tulips. So you have this kind of tulip festival and as these different uh, tulips come out, they have these little markers uh, that are color coded for the different uh, tulips. And this little card here just kind of helps you keep track of, of where these numbers are uh, like located, right? Because as they go up, you have these different tulip festivals. These are kind of the... Uh, ones that are going to give you the most points if you have more of those in there. And these tokens help keep track of that. You have unique player uh, like meeple tokens uh, for each of the players, which are a big nod to the Netherlands again and Amsterdam. You think about those things, they ride so many bikes. We have a cow meeple, a tulip meeple, the, like the little wooden clog uh, shoes. Um, this one, a little teapot uh, and the windmill there. So we have uh, those three, six different unique player meeples, which are really, really well done as well. Uh, so just production on this uh, is, is awesome. I love it. We also include this best bud card with this uh, fun artwork 
uh, encouraging you to, you know, whoever wins, take their picture with it, post it to social media and that sort of thing. So, uh, that being said, let's go ahead and they also include reference cards. So each player has one of these and they'll use just their little meeple token to, to keep track of their score and their own personal card. Uh, so we have uh, six of those. We also have a game set up uh, and uh, reference cards. Uh, there's also six of those. So uh, each player can have their own, which I really appreciate. And with that, uh, let's get into the gameplay a little bit. So in Gift of Tulips, one of the things that I really like uh, with this is that there is an element of you getting points, you getting things, right? With points in this instance for gifting or giving someone else cards, which could potentially help them in uh, getting these majority points for these different positions uh, for the different tulips later on. Uh, so I really like that element. Uh, the other element I like is it's a, an element that uh, I've seen in some other games like Herbaceous and things like that. A very simple mechanic of choosing, like drawing a card, choosing somewhere for that card to go. Sorry about that. Uh, choosing where that card is going to go, what you're going to do with that card, and then drawing a card and doing a different action available to you with that other card. And I really like that mechanic, uh, and so I, it, it comes across really well. Uh, and it's a very interesting game. As far as Herbate, like if you were to compare this with Herbaceous, Herbaceous has, it is simpler. It's scoring mechanisms and things is simpler. It has a, another unique element of like when to, there's like a push your luck element there as well of, hey, when do I want to pot these or score these? Uh, and you have only a certain, uh, you know, um, amount. You can only do that once per type of scoring mechanism. This one, you have uh, an interesting mechanic because you're scoring as you go along with these cards. And I'll, I'll show you. So as part of the setup, you are going to draw two cards. Uh, we already have these uh, majorities started here with these tulip cards. So the orange, and this should be like that. So you're gonna draw two cards in the setup, and based on the numbers, this is going to uh, increase those. I can't remember what the colors are now. I'm gonna go ahead and move, say that's the pink there, um, for that. So now I can, I'm gonna either, I'm gonna keep one of these in my own bouquet. So this will be down here. Uh, not part of the the uh, festival there. And the other is going to go into the secret festival cards, which we'll just put here for now. <laughs> or off to the side right here. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. And each person's going to do that. So this person has some blue, and they're going to take the blue and put it in theirs. And this will be secret. No other players know what that is. And goes into the secret festival to start that off. On your turn, is very simple. You're going to draw a card. And then you're going to figure out what you want to do with this. You can either keep it in your own like bouquet area. Keep it in your own tulips. Your own collection of flowers. In that case, you could potentially get some points for keeping this. Um... If it is one of these flowers here in third or fourth place, or it is not shown, it is one of those. Uh, and really, you just take it as fourth place if it's not shown, and you get those points um, for keeping that, right? So I could keep this. I could keep this, and maybe I'll do that. This player will go ahead and keep that tulip, and they will go ahead and get two points for keeping that uh, flower, that tulip, and they'll draw another one. Now, I cannot perform the same action, so that's one of the actions you can do. Another action is, is you can gift this to an opponent, 
uh, and basically gifting it to the opponent, you will also get a certain number of points. Uh, that will be the what the number printed on the tulip and depending on where it's ranked. So in this case, again, it's not shown, so we're gonna look at this fourth place. And I would go ahead and I would just get the cost on the tulip or the, the amount on the tulip. So I would get three points for gifting that to someone else. Now it becomes more valuable to gift someone else a tulip that is already shown as a majority in like this first, second, or third uh, places, right? You actually get three plus this. So I would actually, if I had a pink and was gifting that to someone, I would actually get, if this were a pink tulip, let's pretend, uh, this would be go at three plus three. So I would get six points to go up on my little marker there, right? So, but with that being there, now I may want to, to keep this again, right? But I can't because I my first action, I've already kept one for my own bouquet. I don't want, really want to gift it to my opponent. So at this point, the other thing I can do is I can either add it to the, the festival display face up. Uh, so that would, if there's ever a tie, it's like the new one coming in. So it would slide this one down and that would be my turn. And after those... Uh, two uh, actions, right? You're going to draw a card, take an action, then draw another tulip card and take a different action. And I think, or the reference card, yeah, so it says right there. So you can add it to your own bouquet, gain the points if the tulip is ranked three or fourth. Uh, you can give the tulip to a friend to gain the points based on the tulip's value plus the current giving value, which again, are one a bonus of one, two, or three. Or you can place it in the festival, your choice between the regular or secret. So I can place it face up there, or I could decide to play it face down in this secret pile, secret festival pile. Then it would be my uh, the other player's turn. They would draw a card. And they'd be like, well, okay, I think I'll keep that one as well. And they would get the two points for keeping that. Draw again. Uh, maybe they're thinking, well, maybe I'll go for that. I'll go ahead and just add that to the secret. Or maybe they'll add it here. And that is now going to move that into the first place. And that's the, the actions of the game. It's very simple, right? But very interesting because now I can, I can now keep this for my own but I would not get any points for keeping it. Or I could gift it and it would be three points plus two points. So I would get five points to gift that to another player and draw another card. And maybe I would go ahead and say, I would keep that one and I would put it in my stash here. I would get one point for keeping that goes to the next player and that's an on and on and on and as you acquire these different cards again the biggest way that you can score points during the game is really by gifting the tulips to the other players especially if they're in these other roles but you're going to want to balance that out because what happens at the end of the game is you're going to take this stash of cards from the secret festival and you're going to shuffle them up and at this point we may have you know a few more cards in there and you're going to draw out five cards one two three four five i believe it's five let me just double check uh i think it's five the rules are very well done um very well explained in here they have examples uh five yes and so they take the, the five random cards, revealing them one at a time, and it's going to shift the festival and change how the festival is, how the tulips are ranked, right? And you're looking at the numbers in this case. And so now we have a six, four, four, three, right? 
We have another one, so this is gonna stay on top. We have another blue, so that's gonna stay in that place as well. And another blue that is 10, and this one is at 10, but this one just had tied or just got to 10, so it's gonna take over that spot there. So then after all of the secret festival cards have come out and the, the rank of the tulips have all shifted, at that point, you are going to have a possibility for more uh, scoring, right? So whoever had the most of the blue flower cards, now the, the numbers are associated with really determining the rank of the festival cards. Uh, it does not matter then too much. I mean, with tie breaks and stuff, it will. But at this point, it doesn't matter the total. If I had two fours uh, and, you know, it was eight, but I had like three twos or something, then uh, it doesn't matter the numbers at this point. It's the cards. So even though I had like a number a total of eight from the numbers. I only have two of these, whereas someone else had three, and that would be the majority. So we're looking at just the number of tulip cards, not the numbers at the at that point. And so you would score these. And so the person who has the most would get 15 points. The person with the second most would get 10 points. Uh, third place in this case and a third or fourth player game would not get anything. They do have separate cards for the festival for five or six players in which you will also score for the person who, in third place for each of these as well. Now you'll actually see that the last uh, fourth place does not get scored at all as far as the end game majority scoring. First, second, and third will be scored. Uh, again, less points for each of those as we go along. And fourth place is simply just not scored at all. Uh, if there is a tie, then you will look at the number, the value of that. If there's still a tie, you'll both get those points. Uh, if there's a game after adding all the points, if there's a tie, you know, whoever has the most tulips uh, in their bouquet would be the winner. Uh, and that is Gift of Tulips. I really like the mechanic of giving or gifting these cards. Uh, and because it's, it's an element of, hey, I'm giving them something that is potentially worth a good chunk of points, 15, 10 points, right? Uh, but what the balance in the game here is, right, is trying to get all of those points because that, that can be pretty substantial. If you gift a four blue, that is seven points. That is almost half of what it would be in here. If you gift a, a three on the next round, and this is still in first place, that's another six points. You've already gained that many points. So a lot of the points come from gifting tulips. And I really like that, you know, the big mechanic to do well in this game, I really, you have to gift tulips. And so it's not just like a, like that's a core element to the game. So I like that that ties in with the name of the game. That being said, you wait, you, the other element is like, you're trying to gift these away but maybe, and trying to keep these low ones. And then as the game gets closer to the end, maybe you'll want to start putting them into the festival face up to start shifting it. If you wait too long, it may be too late to do that. You could just try putting them into the secret festival, which won't shift them up. You can continue to just keep these tulips and get a few points here and there. Uh, and because, I mean, it's not even in the running for points, right? Uh, but putting it in the festival, uh, it's not guaranteed that those cards are going to come out, right? You're going to take five cards from the secret festival, shuffle, um, shuffle that, take five cards from it, and 
that will change. So you're not exactly sure because other people are adding cards to this as well. Maybe they're adding some more blue cards to keep the blue in first place and you've gifted them all of those uh, to get those points. So it's a really interesting mechanic of, hey, I wanna gift people these flowers which are currently ranked really high in hopes to later on in the game maybe swing that the other direction. So it's, it's very interesting and you'll be looking like, well, that person has like way a lot of blue right now. There's no way I'm gonna get majority of that. So I'll just gift it to them. Maybe I'll be able to get second place though. Uh, if I, you know, and I can gift it to that person instead of this other player. Uh, and so there's a lot of interesting choices uh, and decisions that come in this. Uh, there is that kind of luck lucky element it is kind of push your luck element with the secret festival some people may or may not enjoy that element of where it just kind of shifts and you're not exactly sure what you're doing is you're kind of hedging your bets right you're trying to influence it as much as you can uh but it's a little unknown uh but i really like that i think the game is very accessible with the uh, the mechanics being just you draw a card, I either keep it, gift it, or add it to the festival, either face up or face down. Uh, when I take my second action, I can't add it to the festival face up or face down in any way. Uh, I have to gift it to someone or keep it. Uh, and it's very simple. You run until all the cards are gone. Uh, so there's kind of that distinct, you know, game ending, you know, when it's going to end, uh, there's a very visual mechanic element to that of, we have that many cards left, but I really think the production value and the quality of the game just brings this game up a lot as well with the beautiful artwork and the custom, uh, meeple tokens, uh, that are, are just really, really well done. Uh, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of this one, Gift of Tulips. Uh, again, two to six players, ages eight and up. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes. Again, it can be very quickly paced. Uh, it's not going to take up a ton of room as well, so it's very portable, and it can be played on you know, fairly slit, small space uh, considering. And uh, so, yeah, that is how Lou sees it.